Now, for the second year running, a player missed out on a tour card who would have gotten one had they not played the final day, this time being former Players Championship finalist, semifinalist Darren Webster. Uh, how would you fix the problem? Can you even? Yeah, you've got a feel for Darren Webster, haven't you? If you follow him on Facebook, he uh, he put a, a message out in the last few days. He put absolutely devastated, missed out by two legs. Yet yeah, what I can't work out is 128 players in Germany and England. They give them 13 tour cards and us 10 can't work it out. And the allocation of the tour cards is based on the number of total entries in each Q school. So we do get down to that final stage. There is the, the same number of players, but... At the start of the week, there was a, a lot more players in the European one than there was in the UK. So that's where the uh, the allocation of the, the tour cards goes. But hindsight is a wonderful thing. But as it turned out, as you say, if Darren Webster hadn't have played that final down the Sunday, he would have finished above Adam Hunt on goal differential, as we call it. And he would have got a tour card. So it's a, a very cruel way to miss out. And such a, a fine margin can determine a, a player's fate for the whole of the next 12 months. And the points allocation for that order merit, I think it is something that needs to be looked at because the rule is that there is one point awarded for each win when there is a, a full round of matches. So the last 128 after each day, we see the winner removed from the field. So you're down to less than that one two eight. The points then don't come into play until the last 64. So you're playing all those matches in the first round, essentially a, a buy-in for points. But... On the flip side, your leg difference and the legs one, which are the second and third tie breaks after the points on the order merit, they do still count for those first round games. So for me, I I think I've said it before, I I think you've got to make sure there's 128 players in each day in that final stage. And if I was the PDC, I would go down that order of merit from stage one and the the players that have missed out and offer them a spot. We see it happen during the, the players' championships, when it was a, a Saturday and a Sunday or a, a block of three or four events, one player would maybe play the first couple and then they'd drop out and the PDC would go off the, the challenge tour list and, and bring a player in for the next day because very rarely do you see in those players' championships uh, buy unless a, a player drops out at the very, very last minute. But I'd make sure that every day in that final stage, every match apart from the final that's played for the tour card, but every other match leading up to the final, there is one point on the line and... I'm sure there's people out there, our listeners will have some ideas about how Q School could be run different, the formats, point systems, things like that. But for me, this seems like the easiest way to fix it, because if there was a guaranteed point on the line in round one on that Sunday, I don't think there would be a scenario like Conan Whitehead last year, Darren Webster this year, where players could have sat out and in the end could have got a card. That for me, I think is the simplest fix to avoid that happening again next year. Well, I mean, other than uh, you're using some phrase called leg difference that I'm not familiar with, um, I mostly uh, <laughs> agree with that suggestion there because it's the same suggestion I had. I don't know if it was last year or the year before, uh, but I've mentioned it before in the past that I do think each day should have 128 players. And what's the harm on allowing the players who just missed out on qualification for the second stage from filling up when there's under 128. So if you know you finished as the fourth runner up, you know you're guaranteed, oh, sorry, it's the third runner up, you know you're guaranteed to get in on the final day uh, because by that point, three people will have won their card outright. Um, if you finish as the fourth runner up, you might, if someone else chooses to sit out, you might even get in earlier if some people don't show up for the final stage. So there's, the. I don't see the harm in that, and it guarantees that there's that full field, that full field that will be the exact same size as pretty much every player's championship event, and it means that each match would be worth a point. And you look at, you know, it could have been something different. You know, Colin Osborne was in the race to win a tour card. He got a buy on the third day. Granted, that meant he didn't have to play a match, but it also meant that his uh, goal differential and goal scored, is that what we're calling it, um, was lower than the other... Uh, players that he was chasing so he very I mean he in the end he would have needed six points anyway because most of his matches were close but he would have been he was even more disadvantaged in a way because of that buy on the third day because assuming he had played that first match and won it uh, that would have been six more legs he would have won in the legs one slash goal scored column of the table so it it I just don't see why they don't have 128 each day. It just seems to be a more sensible way to go about it. But beyond that, um, 
I know I'm the one who asked the question, but I actually disagree with the question. I don't think this exact situation is a problem because the thing we don't know is what would the draw have been like had Darren Webster sat out? It wouldn't have been exactly the same. It wouldn't have just been that whoever he was drawn to play got a buy and everything else was the same. No, that's not how it would have been. The draw would have been utterly different because the combination of players and the number of players in the field would have been different. So it's very possible that if he sat out, he would have in fact missed out by by a couple places. It's also possible that he would have done even better and someone else would have missed out. We just don't know. So it's it, it's unfortunate and it's frustrating. And he has every right to feel disappointed about it as uh, Conan Whitehead did at had every reason last year, but I don't see it as a problem because we don't know. And even if we had that full 128, if someone, he could have chosen to sit out anyway, and the exact same thing might've happened regardless. It might've been that a different player came in and uh, as the fill in player, and he still ended up missing out by a leg or he would have played in the full event and he missed out on a leg because he lost six, two instead of six, three. We really just don't know. It's not a problem. It's it's unfortunate for him, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, or in this case, the tour card.